Hey, what up IBSL1 kids? This is Mr. Jolly. I'm here today to talk to you guys uh, about 2.2, which is uh, putting the fun in functions. So if you guys want to uh, get out a piece of paper and write these notes down, uh, that would be awesome. Putting the fun in functions. So you probably have heard about functions before. Functions are basically just machines where you have inputs and outputs and each function machine can do something slightly different uh, with them. So some common notations for functions that we're gonna use today are um, the classic f of x is a common one. Another one that you might see is uh, it doesn't have to be f of x, it could be like g of x or something like that. And then sort of a special IB one is that they use this f colon arrow notation and i'll show you an example of that it's kind of a weird one that you probably have never seen before um let's just do a couple little examples switch up my color let's see example um i'm just going to make up a function actually it's not made up it's out of your book on page 70 example number three uh, but if i have a function that's defined by uh, just some coordinates. So if we do some fancy curly brackets, that's a horrible curly bracket. I'll try to do better. Two comma three, four comma five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Real creative book. Uh, I'm running out of room. That's a curly bracket on the end. Man, I am really off to a great start. Uh, it's been a while since I've made one of these videos. I'm gonna try to keep it short and sweet though. Um, you guys, if they were to ask, uh, what is g of eight? Well, if you look at the function, um, that means that this is an input of eight getting put into g and they wanna know what the output is going to be. So if you locate the input of eight, which is right here, oh, let's use a highlighter, right here. Oh, that's a bad color, orange on orange. Uh, something will show up, there we go. This is an input of eight. And when you put in an input of eight, you get out an output of nine. So the answer to this question would be G of eight is equal to nine. Because when you put an eight in, a nine comes out. Man, these are sloppy. I'll get better. My board handwriting is gorgeous, but the, the small iPad handwriting I'm still getting used to. Uh, another example. Let's go back to orange. Um, a very common function notation, something like negative 2x minus 1. Um, and they want to know what f of negative 3 would be. This is literally just dropping uh, an input of negative three into the function. So you replace all of the x's in the function with negative three. So then negative three times negative two is positive six. So you get six minus one. So this is five. So that means f of negative three is equal to, is equal to five. And that one's all good. Um, next up, oh, the funky IB notation. So we'll go back to orange. So don't let this intimidate you, but here's a possible IB notation. F colon X gets mapped to three X plus seven. All that means is when you have an input of X, I'll put that below. This is your different color input that this is your output. So I believe in the example in the book, they wanna know what f of one is. So what is f of one? To find f of one, you would do f colon one gets mapped to three times one plus seven. So it's really very similar to uh, this guy up here, that it's like f of something equals negative two times something minus one. You really just drop in the input into the x part of the output. So uh, three times one is three plus seven is 10. So f of 
1 is equal to 10. So there's the funky IB notation. Oh, how about a trick question? This one always like gets people hung up. Um, let's say h of x is equal to 3. Uh, what is h of negative 1? And people always like look at this and they're like, well, Mr. Jolly, uh, you're supposed to replace the x with negative 1, but there's no x in the thing. What do I do? Is the answer like no solution or anything like that? Um, Really, this function here just means any input of x is going to give you an output of 3. So it doesn't matter what this part is right here. Any input is going to output 3. So h of negative 1 is equal to 3. Boom, you're done. Also, what would that look like on a graph if any input is going to give you an output of 3? Anybody? Just raise your hand. Oh, yes, you in the back. Uh, it looks like a horizontal line. Yeah, exactly. It looks like a horizontal line. Great job. Um, next example. Getting back to this classic function notation. Negative 3x squared minus 1. Um, in the book, they have you like find f of negative 1, find f of 0, find f of 100, find f of a. Maybe I'll just do f of negative 1 real quick. So let's do three parts. f of negative 1, that's a 1, is equal to what? And then we'll do uh, f of a is equal to what? And then the most interesting part is this one, f of x plus 1. Oh boy. All right, different color. Uh, neg first one, just drop a negative 1 in. So you get negative 3 times negative 1 squared. Gosh, my handwriting, you guys. I'm going to do better, I swear. Um, negative 1 squared is just negative 1 times itself, so that's positive 1. But then positive 1 times negative 3 is just negative 3, so you get negative 3 minus 1, which is negative 4. So f of negative 1 is equal to negative 4. Now, f of a, some people might get tripped up with that, like, wait, what? I, I don't understand what I was asking. It's still the same thing you've been doing before. You just replace every input with whatever is right here. So we're just going to replace all the inputs, the x's, with a's. So this becomes negative 3 a squared minus 1. And then you know what? You're done with that part. Now, f of x plus 1. That means you would rewrite the equation, which is negative 3 times the input squared minus 1. Now, this entire time, we've just been replacing this spot with whatever the input was that they wanted us to plug in. So you literally just put x, whoops, x plus 1 right there. Now, x plus 1 squared. Remember, it is not x squared plus 1 squared. You cannot distribute the square right like that. I wish it worked like that, but life is not simple sometimes. Uh, you actually have to do x plus 1 times x plus 1 minus 1. Then we got to do a little, uh, does anybody know the term FOIL? Yeah, some people have heard of first, outer, inner, last. Uh, some people call it the rainbow method uh, or... I hear all sorts of stuff, the whale method. So you have to multiply the first things, the outer things, the inner things, and the last things. So I'm just going to let that negative 3 right there just hang out on the outside. So that guy's going to chill. And then inside, you would get x squared plus x plus x plus 1. And then the negative 1 is just chilling at the back. We'll get there eventually. Then a little cleanup inside. You get negative 3 x squared plus 2x plus 1, and then the minus 1 is there. Then we're going to distribute this negative 3 to this guy, this guy, and that guy. So we get negative 3x squared minus 6x minus 3 minus 1. So that took care of the parentheses. Also, just yell at me if I made a mistake somewhere, and I'll fix it. Um, now we just get little apples and oranges. 
these two guys can be combined to get what? Negative 4? So f of x plus 1 is equal to negative 3x squared minus 6x minus 4. And then boom, we are done with that problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's two more examples. Uh, they're really just like word problem examples of uh, putting things, yeah, here, we'll, we'll do one of them. Let's do example six in the book. So in this example, it says Nikita is planning a sport banquet. I'm not sure what that even means. Uh, he must pay $320 to rent the room. So $320 to rent the room. And $20 per person for the dinner. What's for dinner? Um, part A. Express a, a total cost C as a function of the number of people N. So total cost, capital C, of the number of people which is N, who attended the banquet. Um, you guys, if there's N people attending and you have to pay $20 per person, that means that you have to pay 20 N for the food that those N people are gonna be eating. Also on top of that, you got the 320 that you had to put down for the room just to secure it, even if zero people came. So our cost function is going to be $20 per person but then you have to add the cost of the room at the end. So you get this nice linear equation right here. It's like a y equals mx plus b. We'll get there if that doesn't sound familiar. Should though. Uh, part b, what notation would be used to find the cost if the banquet, if uh, at 125 people attend, calculate this value. So for part b, the cost of 125 people attending. That means that you would just replace N with 125. So you get 20 times 125 plus 320. So then in your head real quick, you just multiply, whoops, sorry, I turned sideways. Uh, 20 times 125. And of course, so uh, we all know that that is 2,500. plus the 320, so $2,820. Uh, what notation could be used to find the number of people who can attend the banquet if Nikita's budget for the banquet is 1,250? You guys. Um, now they're switching things up. They're not giving us people that attend. They're saying, what if the budget is 1250? How many people can come? Okay, uh, in this case, they've given us an output of the function because this function takes number of people as an input and then outputs a total cost. So our total cost now is gonna be one, two, five, zero, and we have to set that equal to uh, this guy up here, 20N plus uh, 320. So then you have to go back to your algebra training and realize, okay, I gotta get the N by itself, so I'm gonna subtract 320 from both sides. So 1250 minus 320 is 930. That's 20 n. So then divvy both sides by 20. I won't always write out every step like this, but I thought it's day one. We'll we'll write it out. So this is 46.5 is equal to n. Ooh, what did I just find? Does that mean 46.5 people can attend? I don't think that we can have a half person attend and still eat a dinner. 
So um, I'm going to brown that down to the nearest whole person. This would be 46 people can come. And then she'll have a little bit of leftover money. But uh, who knows? Wait, Nikita? Oh, it says he. He must pay. Sorry, I didn't mean to genderize Nikita. My bad. Um, and the last part says, what values of n do not make sense for this situation? So um, in this case, uh, the, like what values of n don't make sense? Um, I would say negative numbers definitely don't make sense because that would be a negative number of people attending. Um, and like, I don't know, could N be as big as you want it to be? Can the number of people the room can hold or the number of people who can be covered by Nikita's budget? So yeah, like it wouldn't make sense for this to be like N to be billions of people because like what room is going to hold billions of people? But I guess we don't know anything about the room. So I'm just going to say that N has to be neg uh, non-negative. So N has to be greater than or equal to zero. I guess zero people could attend. Fun party. Anyway, guys, uh, it's been fun. We'll post this up. I'm going to post the homework. The homework is 2B. Homework uh, 2B out of your book. It's on page 73. Cool. Thanks.